ಪ್ರದೇಶ ಸಂವಿಧಾನ ಸಂಸ್ಕಾರ ಸಂಸ್ಕಾರ ಇಸ್ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪರ್ಪಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಸಿವಿಲೈಸೇಷನ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟೂ ಫೇಸಸ್ ಒನ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಲ್ಸ್ ಫೋರ್ಸಸ್ ಎಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ದರ್ ಅಫಿಲಿಟಿ ಇಂಟರ್ನೇಟಿವಿಟಿ ನೇಚರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕರೆಸ್ಪಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಹೀಸ್ ಸಬ್ಸ್ಟಾನ್ಷಿಯಲ್ ಗ್ರೌಂಡ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟೂಡ್ chemicals they have understood metals they have understood metallurgy as a consequence of it they have understood construction technology each and every thing each and every parcel of the creation that is surrounding them is properly understood and developed this is a, a secondary or derivative civilization in which we know about the external things we know about their competency compatibility and application level and by means of your scientific grade we are trying to get them and put them into proper use but the primary civilization is to get himself properly refined and defined proper definition of a person is understanding the ultimate purpose the immediate purpose of life is to live second is to see that everybody lives with us to compatible and all around happiness oriented coexistence but the ultimate purpose of life is to see that life of eternity and bring the life of perennial joy and brotherhood in this life so defining human life and refining human life by application of visible and invisible tools is the primary civilization which is known as sanskara so the utmost scientific advancement of human finding is the knowledge of sanskara in which the humans are refined those who are born are claiming that they are born for refining everything and applying everything to their use to their need emergency demand and distribution so the primary science itself is sanskar so this sanskar how it is capable of doing this thing we are going to scientifically study it apart from the religious significances apart from their social influence apart from integrating the society molding the society creating a potential society by which it can make either the other opponents either to be transformed or to be buried in eternal silence that type of uh, courage that type of audacity that type of commanding that type of potential knowledge which serves as an ornament for emancipation and instrument for proper survival as a weapon for self protection and establishment of dharma is possible only by a gradual process of spiritual refinery system which is known as sanskara so sanskaras are meant for six major things as per the shastra one is arhata second is anukulya third is yathatata sthiti as is various condition that is known as yathatata sthiti and fourth is known as gati fifth is known as sujivana and sixth is known as purthi these qualities are embedded in a person which is being made latent or clouded by ten immemorial illusory mark which can be eradicated only by a paranormal unintelligible divine intervention which are there guided by the transcendental voice of god in the form of scriptures which have been promulgated by those who are nothing but the personification of austerity purity and magnanimity who are called are designated as rishis a specialized inborn intelligence indigenous native people of our land who are very much created by the creator himself as a symptom for his mercy if there is a mother if she is not feeding us if she is not taking care of us if she is not nourishing us there is no possibility of proof of her maternity or motherhood likewise god's mercy has been established only by these things number 1 he has created shastra number 2 he has created rishi parampara 3 he has created us conscious manasakshi or antasakshi moreover he has incarnated himself in various avatars number 5 he has delegated innumerable spiritual personalities in the form of sages seers scholars scholars scientists students innumerable people of various caliber and standard they have been made to meet their presence in the land these things are the symptoms of divine clemency with which it is very hard for us to believe that there is a god and he is merciful and concerned on us so number first is arhata what is arhata whatever that has been clouding you that has been preventing you from doing a thing 
that disqualifying element is removed by a potential shock. That is known as arvihata. So arvihata is creating an eligibility by removing an unwanted <coughs> apparition element. Then anupurya is making you compatible or suitable for any act that you are going to do. First is to create an eligibility by removal of the unwanted evil element. Second is to instill in us or to make the essential potence that is latent inside to manifest so that we are qualified for getting into something which we are proposed to do or we are destined to do. Then the third thing is yatha tatha. We are having an original standard. The real standard of human being or the real reflective status of human being is purity. Satchit ananda, existence, sentience and divine bliss. This is the nature of each and every parcel or particle what we call spirit on. Each and every spirit unit is composed of these qualities which are inseparable and inexhaustible. These inexhaustible qualities are being totally dilapidated as well as diversified by means of an illusory pull which we call mayavarana. This has made the human beings not to recognize their real status, real potency, real destination, real meaning of life and real process of making the life successful due to which they are suffering. So, yatatrata sthiti. If a person practices these samskaras, then only a person can get his original status realized and recognized. That is the third thing. And the fourth thing is, apart from getting all of these benefits, there are also some benefits which I want to say, gati. Gati is to get the proper destination or moksha, if you want liberation. And fifth is sujivana. If your person is well refined, a single refined person by his touch, by his oration, by his vision, by his compassionate and merciful meditation, he can make hundreds of people to be rehabilitated, retracted, repatriated in the orbit of moral and ethicism. So if there are at least some countable members, countable members in this uncountable population, even if we are having a trivial or negligible quality as well as quantity, those people gradually, even though it is not immediately possible, this qualitative enhancement and qualitative quantitative enhancement can be very gradually made by these people. So Jivana, a person who is spiritually refined, a person who is innocent, a person who is ignorant, and a person who has got no opportunities to commit mistakes, that is entirely different from a person who is having spiritual sturdity and moral courage. A person who is spiritually powerful as well as ethically principled, such a person can radiate, regulate and permeate the atmosphere. That is the greatness. So that is known as Sujivana, in which he can lead a better life and he can just assure the best for him as well as any of his associates, even to his offenders, by his mercy he can embrace them and he can lead them to the pathway of righteousness and success. That is the greatness. It is known as Sujivana. And Puti is without understanding these samskaras and making a person a really Sanskrita, that is a well refined, his life becomes incomplete. The other dimension of life becomes very blind, blank, and just it has no meaning at all. So, human being has two dimensions of life. The other dimension is to go for eternity, to go for universality, to go for the principles of absolutism. All of these things are not possible without the aid of samskaras and their practical rituals. So, rituals are very much essential for making a person eligible and qualified, number one. 